You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, we're going to be discussing what I believe to be Mikel Arteta's mistakes since he took over the job at Arsenal. Now, I've been called an Arteta apologist. I've been called um, somebody who's just desperate to, to prove himself right over the fact that I was quite vocal about Unai Emery being the wrong man. And people have suggested that I've completely overlooked and ignored uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the mistakes that Mikel Arteta has made, and listen, there's no getting away from the fact that he has made errors, and I recognise them just like everybody else. So I felt that it was about time we did a podcast where I look at the other side of things, not because I think it's you know it's um, it, it, it it makes a difference to the way I look at his tenure overall but because I think that we probably need a bit more balance about the debate. My opinion is clear. You've all seen it. You've all heard it. And um, now it's time for me to look at the other side of Mikel Arteta's tenure so far. And I hope to do that during this edition of the show. Now, uh, if you are in the live chat watching this while it's premiering on YouTube, then uh, I'm not ignoring you. This is a pre-record, however. So I won't be able to respond to your comments and questions in real time but chuck them in the chat box um, and uh, in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to take a look back and pick out some of those and reply uh, to as many as I possibly can. So let's kick off by discussing uh, the, the mistakes that I believe Mikel Arteta has made. And I'll, I'll put them into a few categories. And the first one for me um, is probably man management. There have been times where Mikel Arteta has stood in front of a camera post-match, pre-match, and I think he's given too much away. I think that as a top-level manager, you come under incredible pressure. I think sometimes that pressure gets to you, and I think the more experienced managers have learned how to deal with that pressure, how to handle that pressure, and how to not let it come across in their media work. Now, on the one hand, as a fan, you want your manager to be honest. You want to know what's going on at your club. You want to know what is happening behind the scenes. But there have been a couple of occasions this season where Mikel Arteta, I think, has let his tongue run away from him in those, uh, in those interviews. And whilst on the one hand, it's been great to have a little bit of transparency, something that we got none of during Unai Emery's tenure, actually, it's caused him a few problems. We heard him completely dig out Nicola Pepe after Pepe had been speaking in the press and talking about the fact that he was uh, disappointed that he wasn't getting more game time. And then, of course, he got sent off at, at Leeds United. And all of a sudden, Mikel Arteta was there in front of the camera post-match. Emotions were, were bubbling and he probably dug the player out maybe a little bit too much, in my opinion. And you've seen Nicola Pepe's Arsenal career under Mikel Arteta have many ups and downs. And it's hard to know whether that had an effect. What I will say has had an effect on Nicolas Pepe is the fact that he's not been given minutes. Um, you know, and, and when I say not being given minutes, I don't mean none at all. I mean not enough minutes. I think there's been times where Nicola Pepe's come into the side, played really, really well, and then been left on the bench the next game. And I know it's a difficult season. I know there is a lot of uh, rotation needed, but I feel like he can feel quite hard done by, by that. And then you, you talk about sort of uh, other man management issues, you know, the, the Pierre Emerick Abamyang situation, where of course, he turned up late to the North London derby. Now, I absolutely 100% agree with the manager's decision on leaving him out of the team. I 100% agree with the fact that that is completely unacceptable, in particular from your club captain. Would I have gone public with it, though? No, I wouldn't. And I felt like Mikel Arteta was probably protecting his own back and, and almost anticipating, preempting the meltdown that would have followed had Arsenal lost that game. So by announcing to the world that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang uh, had been left out of the team for disciplinary reasons, what he did was cover his own back and almost shifted the blame onto Aubameyang before the game even started. So that in the event that we did lose and we weren't able to score a goal, etc., etc., everybody would have been looking at Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and said, 
you're our captain, you're our goal scorer, you didn't turn up on time or, you know, at the time we didn't know exactly what it was when he said it. But now the buck is with you because you have let us down. So I think Mikel Arteta was almost preempting a bad result and felt the need to, to highlight what had gone on with Aubameyang so that in the event that his decision to leave him out backfired, he'd have some kind of, uh, some kind of justification for it. Personally, as I said, I don't think he should have gone public on it. And I think what that's led to is it's led to a number of stories doing the rounds over the last uh, few weeks and days about Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, about other members of the dressing room feeling a little bit disenfranchised and a little bit disconnected with Mikel Arteta. And that is a story that journalists are waiting to write every time a team fails to perform. Every time results are a little bit questionable, that's one of the first things that people look at. Has he lost the dressing room? And for me, in Mikel Arteta going public with some of the things that he has over the course of the season, I think he's actually fueled those fires. And maybe a more experienced coach wouldn't have fallen into that trap. When you're talking about man management, you can also throw in the likes of Matteo Genduzzi. You can talk about that situation. Would he have been better off Mikel Arteta almost, uh, I'm not going to say bending his principles, but almost swallowing what Matteo Genduzzi is as a person and as a character for us to be better equipped in midfield. I think throughout the course of the season, we've seen that when Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka are unavailable, we look fallible in the centre of the park. Danny Sabahs, Hasn't been up to it for the, for most of the season. Mohamed Elneny has come in and given the odd decent performance, but we all agree isn't quite at that level. So would we have been better off had he almost swallowed his pride a little bit with Matteo Genduzzi and allowed him to stay at the club? Who knows? The thing is here is that we can't have it both ways as fans and we've got to make a decision. Do you want Mikel Arteta to come in and fix the culture that we've all been moaning about for the last decade? We've all talked about it. We've all talked about players coming to the club and getting a free ride. We talked about there being no accountability, no competition for places. But in order to create this culture that Mikel Arteta wants, he has to be ruthless regardless of who it is. So whilst I think those points I've made are probably things that have had a detrimental impact on us as a football team, I think in the longer term, they were probably the right thing to do if... He wants to get that culture there. You have to go through pain, though, to get to that point. You look at some of the other top managers sort of throughout the course of football and, and throughout the time I've been watching football, the last 25 years or so, and you look at, for example, Sir Alex Ferguson. He's someone I always look to as an example of a manager who had his fallings out with players, had his disagreements with players, but knew that those players brought something to his team that nobody else did and was willing to almost overlook certain incidents to get the best out of his football team. And you could argue that that is actually the job of the manager. You may not like someone's attitude. You may not like someone's application. But if they make you a better football team, then more often than not, you probably should select them. And I think Mikel Arteta has allowed attitudes and things that go on off of the pitch to maybe sometimes dictate his team selections rather than him picking the best team for the game. And that is an issue. But again, what do you want? Do you want the culture to be fixed? If you do, then that has to happen. If you're more bothered about the results coming instantly, then you'll look at it the other way. And I think the right answer or the right approach is somewhere in between. How many times did Sir Alex Ferguson fall out with Roy Keane? How many times uh, you know, did, did Arsenal have players under Arsene Wenger who you weren't quite sure about their commitment levels, but you knew they were the best players and Arsene Wenger would still persist with them. So I think even the most authoritative managers out there have had to sort of sacrifice their principles to a degree at certain points for the good of the team. And Mikel Arteta doesn't seem to be willing to do that under any circumstances whatsoever. You can also talk about tactics and you can talk about the fact that we've been a little bit um, almost scared in certain games. We've been a little bit negative. We've, particularly at the start of the season, we would sit off teams a lot and we'd play with the back three, pretty much a back five without the ball. And we were very negative and we were almost very one dimensional looking to hit teams on the break with Aubameyang running in behind. And when that didn't work, we had no alternative. There was no other answer. 
And I think that's something that you can, you can point at Mikel Arteta for. Was he bold enough? Was he brave enough from the very beginning? Now, I know why Mikel Arteta went down that route. And he went down that route because he'd seen it pull off wonderful success in the FA Cup. He'd seen it come to fruition against two sides who were stronger than Arsenal in the semi and the final. And I wonder if that kind of, that convinced him that that was the way to go. But what I wanted to see from Mikel Arteta was for him to be a bit bolder and look to the future a little bit more and go with the team or the style, or the formation that he wanted us to end up playing rather than the one he thought was going to almost put a plaster over the wound in the meantime. So that's another thing that I think Mikel Arteta has got wrong. And I think he doubts himself. You know, I, I think sometimes he comes across as this ultra confident coach who really believes in his ways and will never veer away from them. But I actually think that Mikel Arteta has a bit of self-doubt. And I think that self-doubt is evident when you see him, for example, one week line up with a centre forward and three technical players in behind, i.e. Odegaard, Smith Rowe, Saka, for example. And then you've seen him in another week go with Pepe, go with Saka on the flank. Maybe, you know, we saw Martinelli start the other day and I know there was a lot of injuries, but what is it that Mikel Arteta wants to achieve um, with those positions? I think he's almost seeing himself go too technical and then think we need more raw pace, we need more physicality, we need to be able to press. And then he's completely flipped that the next week and then he's gone back the week after. So I think at times Mikel Arteta has doubted his own methods, doubted his own ideology and that's uh, led to him not settling on, on anything and, and not settling on anything has been largely why we've struggled or, or one of the main reasons at least why we've struggled for consistency. Whether it's the centre-backs, whether it's the, uh, the forward line, there always seems to be changes in the Arsenal team. And I get that it's a tough season. I've said it already. I get that rotation is, is necessary. And I, I do believe it is absolutely necessary. But still, for me, I want to see Mikel Arteta find his way and stick to it. That's, that, that's another thing that's really frustrated me. So, uh, you know, I've come up with a few things there. I've talked largely about man management because I think that's where he's got to learn the most. Um, and man management means getting a tune out of people who you don't always see eye to eye with. I think his handling of the media at times has been brilliant and at times it's been not so good. And, um, you know, when you, you're tasked with facing the media as often as he is, then, of course, those moments are going to happen. You know, you see far more experienced coaches, i.e. Jurgen Klopp at times. Uh, get prickly in front of the camera and, and get a little bit uh, sort of funny. You know, Jose Mourinho has made an absolute career out of it and, and sort of diverting the attention off of him um, and his team and onto other incidents, just like he did at the weekend. So I think these are a few sort of development areas in which Mikel Arteta needs to improve. Recruitment, I think he's done OK. Um, you know, you look at some of the players we've brought in, I think they've done well for the most part. Does, does he, you know, has he made a mistake leaving us short at left back? I think absolutely. I think that's another big mistake that Mikel Arteta has made this season. You know, we, we got to a point where we'd been sort of weeding out the bad, the bad players. We'd been moving them on. We'd been doing our best to do that. Sayer Kalasinac arguably was, was part of that little click with Mesut Ozil, Shkodran Mustafi, etc., but was it the right decision to allow him to go out on loan? Especially if you were going to let Ainsley Maitland-Niles go out on loan and leave us completely devoid of a natural left back. I don't think he's a good player. I don't think he's someone that I'd want to see in the team week in, week out. But we're now likely uh, to have lost Kieran Tierney for the remainder of the season and we don't have a natural left back. And now Mikel Arteta is playing catch up. He's chasing his tail with regards to the left back situation. Played Cedric there against Slavia Prague. Didn't really work reverted to playing Granit Xhaka in a sort of left-back position against Sheffield United. But is that sustainable? So that's another er error that Mikel Arteta's made. Is there an argument that he made an error with the goalkeeping situation? Should he have kept hold of Emi Martinez and allowed Bern Leno to leave? I think that Emi Martinez, and I, and I know this from, from uh, somebody who's, who's spoken to Emi Martinez on a sort of personal level, Martinez wanted to go. Martinez was not happy to compete for a number one spot. He wanted to be the number one somewhere. And when the money came in, Arsenal's need for the money and Mick, uh, Emi Martinez's desire to leave the club combined made that the right thing. So um, 
I'm a little bit on the fence about that one, but Bern Leno has cost us at times this season. I think he's he's pulled off wonderful saves, as Bern Leno will always do, but I think there's been moments as well where he's made us look, you know, made us look vulnerable and, and as a result we've conceded goals. Midfield is another area that you can look at Mikel Arteta and say, I'm not sure that you've you've handled this quite right. You talk about Matteo Genduzzi and, and I mentioned you know him a little bit earlier on in the show. I talked about the fact that we probably left ourselves a little bit short with Matteo Genduzzi going uh, out on loan. Lucas Torreira is another one who we could have probably done with at certain points in the season. But it goes back to that point I was making about the culture. And in Matteo Genduzzi, there's a troublesome character. In Lucas Torreira, there's somebody who doesn't want to play for Arsenal. He doesn't want to be in London. He, that's been abundantly clear from right at the beginning of his Arsenal career. You know, Lucas Torreira has not been happy in London. He wants to go. And we now know that he wants to join Boca Juniors. He's made no secret of that. So those two players, there are reasons why they've been left out. But I just wonder if Mikel's cut his nose off to spite his face in those situations and left us short, too short. And, uh, and, and we've paid for it later on. Has he overworked some of the younger players, in particular Bukayo Saka, who it feels like leading up to that Sheffield United game where he played quite well, he'd almost hit a bit of a he'd almost hit a bit of a brick wall in the sense of he wasn't he wasn't converting chances, he wasn't taking chances, his game was just lacking that that final something. And is that because he was burnt out? Is that because he'd been rushed back from injury because we were so desperate? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's strange. And then th there's a bit of hip hypocrisy at times with, uh, with Mikel Arteta. You know, on the one hand, Bukayo Saka is, is this super important player who plays every time he's fit and is so important that we rush him back from injury. And on the other hand, Gabriel Martinelli, who in my opinion is equally as talented, isn't, isn't able to play every week. And when asked the reasons why, it's because he's still developing and because he's still young. Is Saka that much better than Martinelli? I would argue he's not. So this handling of Martinelli is probably another thing that you could throw in in terms of Mikel Arteta's mistakes as Arsenal boss. Those are the main ones that come to my head. And, and as I say, this is you know, off the top of my head. I'm sure there are other bits and pieces that are worth debating and thinking about. But I'm literally just sitting here running through it all in my head. And um, that's what I can come up with. So... There are things that I disagree with Mikel on. There are decisions he's made that I think have been questionable. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that I don't think he's the right man for the job. That doesn't mean I don't think he deserves more time. As I've said time and time again, at the start of next season, the pressure is really on for Mikel Arteta. I decided before Christmas, given our league position, we were in bloody 15th, for God's sake, that the Premier League was a write-off and it was all on Europe and it was all about uh, trying to salvage the season via that route. And we still have the chance to do that. So whilst we still have the chance, I think he deserves to be there. What's the point in changing him now? Who are you going to bring in for the last seven, eight league games of the season and what good would it do? So um, that's where I stand on Mikel Arteta. Those are the things I believe he's got wrong. As you can tell, I don't think he's flawless and I accept that he's new and I accept that he's young. He's learning on the job. The question is, is he learning quick enough to hold on to such a big job at such a big club? Don't forget to like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And don't forget to download the Le Bon app. They've kindly sponsored the podcast over the last few days. You'll find the link in the description below. I won. I beat Adam McCola, uh, Boovy, Elliot Hackney and Rory Jennings in our predicted game this week. Top of the table, having predicted uh, the Brighton and Everton uh, result. Um, me and Rory were head to head on the last round. Uh, going into that game, Rory had Everton to win and I had a draw. Unfortunately for me, it was a draw and I won the prize pot. So I'm absolutely delighted with that. But what I will say is Le Bomb is a fantastic app on which you can compete against your friends rather than the bookmakers. So it's not just about the money, it's about the bragging rights. And what's more better, what's more uh, enjoyable than having the bragging rights, particularly uh, amongst your closest pals. So do check it out. You must be 18 or over to play and you must be a UK resident. But you'll find the link in the description. Click on it. Download the La Bomb app. I thank them for their support over the last few days. I thank them for allowing me to play this fantastic game. And I'll certainly be playing it with my mates going forward.
Thank you very much, and I will catch you all soon.